It might sound crazy to some, but one of the biggest reasons I'm always excited when a new folding smartphone is announced or released is because there's almost always some little bit of interesting engineering going on with that device. When it comes to slab style phones, it's pretty much a perfected art. They're doing some things here and there, but nothing is really changing all that rapidly. With folding phones, very often we are getting things like new versions of ultra thin glass, completely re-engineered hinges. We are squeezing in more and more impressive camera hardware into smaller and smaller spaces. And for me, all of that is very interesting. And if that's interesting to you, this article posted on samsungmobilepress.com might be interesting too. This is, like I said, from Samsung and they're hyping up their new folding phones, but they're giving us a little bit of a look, a peek behind the curtain at some of the engineering that allowed these devices to exist. The breakthroughs powering Samsung's thinnest, most refined foldables. Let's take a look. So they start off by talking about how they're making the Z Flip and the Z Fold both thinner, but I think that there is an interesting little tidbit to pull out of this here. So it says that the Flip 7 is 6.5 millimeters thin when open and 13.7 millimeters when closed. So that's something that can fit into your pocket much more easily. An ultra high density circuit board makes sure there is no wasted space internally. And here's the interesting bit. Samsung enhanced the battery's density, boosting its capacity by 300 milliamp hours while reducing its thickness. So they're not using a new battery technology. This is not silicon carbon. But even with the older tech that they seem to be more comfortable with, they were able to shrink the battery down and increase its capacity by 300 milliamp hours. When we scroll down and we talk about the Fold 7, they say that it is about 48% thinner than the original Z Fold. If you wanna have a really good comparison, then you compare your new device to a device that was six or seven generations ago, you're gonna have a pretty solid comparison. Combined with a wider and brighter screen, a new 21 by nine bar phone aspect ratio. So they are directly saying this is like a bar phone, unlike, we, unlike what they had in the past. So good to have that called out, delivers a foldable device. It is both portable and intuitive to use. They don't mention the battery here at all. And I think that the reason for this is maybe just because they think it's going to be a little bit kind of unimpressive because the capacity stayed the same. But I would bet pretty good money that the exact same thing they did for the flip that allowed them to shrink the battery and increase the capacity happened on the fold as well. The difference is they just were able to shrink the battery and maintain the capacity. So they're not able to increase it because they had to really cut down on the space that they were giving to the battery in order to get this thin and not use silicon carbon. This next part I find really, really fascinating, even if I don't fully understand all of it. I don't think people understand how insanely important the hinges are to these devices. It's not just the thing that allows the thing to open and close. There is so much to these hinges, it's not even funny. They have a huge impact on how visible the crease is on that device. They have a huge impact on how durable that screen is, how likely it is to crack down the middle. They have a huge impact on how easy it is to open and close. That stuff matters. How rigid it is. It can, can it stay in different postures? All of this stuff is controlled by the hinge. And what Samsung says they've done here is they've made their hinge stronger, but also slimmer. And you have this little graphic here that shows the Fold 6 versus the Fold 7. Not only is it 27% thinner, it's 43% lighter as well. And you can see that there's just a lot less physically inside the hinge. They've reduced the number of components once again. And not only have they apparently made it thinner and lighter, they're also using new alloy components to increase yield strength by 14%. So indeed it is apparently stronger as well. But this last little bit here, a wing plate that opens wider delivers a flatter and cleaner screen for a more premium viewing experience. What are they talking about, a wing plate? I think 
it's this thing right here. You can see on the Fold 7, actually, let's open this up another way. If we zoom in on this animation for the Z Fold 7, what you'll see here is that they have this little piece sitting right there in the middle, right underneath where that crease would be. And if we come over to the side at the Z Fold 6 side of this animation, there's nothing like that there, and there hasn't been anything like that there as far as I have ever seen. So I believe that is the wing plate. And what it's doing, fairly obviously, I think, is sitting underneath the crease and kind of supporting it from below, allowing it to be flatter and harder to notice than it used to be. But they also have this other animation too, which I think is really cool because it shows the device is actually closing. And now that wing plate is still in the same spot. It's sitting at the bottom of that teardrop fold. But notice how they compare this, the diameter of that crease on the Fold 6. They bring it over here to the Fold 7 and they show you the difference between those two. Let's actually zoom in on that as well. That is a pretty substantial difference. So what does that amount to? Well, look, take a piece of paper and fold it over sharply. Take a different piece of paper and fold it over a lot less sharply and tell me which one has less of a crease in it. Tell me which one is getting less strain placed on it. Which one is going to be more likely to tear later on? Well, duh. It's going to be the one that's going to be folded more sharply. And as they say here, that reduction is 23%. It is 23% rounder than it was before. And that makes a big difference. A lot of other OEMs have been doing this sort of thing for a while. Having this more rounder teardrop crease. And it seems like Samsung is really truly fully in that camp now. But one big difference is with what they're doing compared to what other companies like Oppo or OnePlus are doing, their crease seems to be much smoother rather than this sort of wavy look that Oppo and OnePlus have. And then like I mentioned earlier, they have once again refined the ultra thin glass, reduced display thickness by more than 39% by completely re-optimizing the panel structure. They've added a titanium based lattice that replaces carbon fiber so it's 64% more durable and has better resistance. But at the same time, the ultra thin glass layer itself is 50% thicker. When you look at this, there's all these different layers. There's adhesive layers, there's a titanium layer, and then there's the actual ultra thin glass. So they've made the whole thing thinner, but the glass part itself, the part that you have to worry about breaking and cracking is now 50% thicker. So in theory, it should be harder to break, more resistant to those cracks. And that's been the case, I feel like, all throughout the Z Fold line. I feel like you're seeing fewer and fewer of these devices spontaneously cracking as time goes on. And hopefully the Fold 7 is just another in that long line of improvements. And between the thicker UTG, the titanium back plate, and that rounder teardrop style fold taking place, I think it should be. They also say here that they've done a complete structural redesign in order to fit this 200 megapixel sensor into this device. Look, I know that we all kind of wish that the telephoto zoom would be improved as well, but the ultra wide is pretty darn solid. It's been improved. And then the primary is a 200 megapixel sensor that's 44% larger than last year's. That is a pretty significant improvement. I still want better zoom just like you do, but we can't discount what they've done with that primary sensor. Of course, once I get my device, I'm going to be putting it through its paces and seeing, is it really that much better than the Fold 6 in low light, shutter speed, video? These are all places where we do need to see a pretty substantial improvement. Fingers crossed that we're going to actually get that. The cover screen is now a Corning Gorilla Glass Ceramic 2, which is very, very durable, 30% stronger in material strength than the previous generation. The frame and hinge cover have been upgraded to advanced armor aluminum, so that's 10% tougher as well. Across the board, it does seem to me like even though they've made the thing so crazy thin, they have tried to do things to also make it more durable, which you have to do when you're making something that is this thin. So guys, all in all, I think that was a pretty cool post. I love when companies do this sort of thing and try to kind of show you some of the engineering. And yes, it is absolutely like advertisement stuff. They're just telling you how great their phone is. But if you try to be objective and you look at it, you can see some pretty cool stuff. Like personally, I just love seeing the stuff about the hinge that they're, you know, removing components and how they're changing things around. I think that stuff is really, really interesting. Hopefully, 
you guys did as well. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel because I should have my Fold 7 relatively soon. Ordered it day one, so if you want to see more coverage of that phone, you're going to want to be here. I'm going to be very, very detailed. I'm going to get lost in the weeds for a long time with this device, as I usually do. So guys, I'll see you on the next one, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.